Shameless. Wasting a lot of money doing that. So I don't know how it's working. If they're getting their pain or if they're getting paid, whatever it is, it's just not working. Look, it's a great idea to have these people come in. No, I think it's a great idea. But the pre-tape stuff, no. the, the, the I don't have to disagree. I don't watch it. Every time I watch I, those these superstars come on, I'm just fast forwarding. Remember, okay. Now there's another point that I wanted to point out in the previous shows of ours. Mm-hmm. I said that if you're going to to bring back the realism to the wrestling right. world um, to have some candid spots. Right. So say, for example, if you go in the back and the camera follows you in the back and you see a bunch of wrestlers, say, for example, a heel could be talking to a face because simply they're friends. That's a candid moment. Right. Okay. Well, we said that in the past shows. Mm-hmm. They decided to try it. Yeah. With Brian Kendrick. What happens was they came back from commercial and they were already in a mid conversation with brian kendrick and jared king lawler and michael cole like if it was happening in real time bringing reality to the wwe yep which i thought it was a great idea i'm just wanted to point out that we've called for more spots of being candid and they did last week and it worked it looked it looked pretty good it looked real yeah. like you wanted to say what was he talking? I, I'm still wanting to know what the hell he was talking about. Yeah. What was he talking to Jared King and Michael Cole about? Right. See, that's the kind of stuff that makes you interested. Yep. And so anyway, Jared King Lawler introduces himself as Brian Kendrick's opponent, which was really good. I liked that. That was funny. Uh, I, I like Jared King Lawler. I think maybe this is kind of like him way of saying goodbye. You know, he brung. I well, mean, how much longer does he have? I don't know, but. Just ask he's me. He's pretty th- active for someone who's pretty is leaving. He is, but he, I don't. He, you know, he's part of a lot of different things going on. But why, why Jared King Lawler versus Brian Kendrick? I don't know. There's I don't no know why Brian it. Kendrick is even on Raw. You're right. That's a good point. I wanted to point out something else too. I thought it was kind of funny that Kendrick said that he was uh, a tag team champion more than. Uh, that's that's more than Lawler ever held. Mm-hmm. But I also like to point out, he must have been talking about tag team title. Yeah. Because if you look back at Jerry King Lawler's history, he's been champion a bunch of times. Yeah, he said tag team. So that was kind of stupid. And Lawler should have said, yeah, well, speak to me when you win an actual championship belt. <laughs> well, see the way he introduced himself, Hall of Fame? Yeah. and He did that. He knew, he knew what he was doing mm-hmm. when he was stepped in there with him. And And I guarantee you, Kendrick, would never, ever be a WWE champion. No, he wouldn't even be close to the Hall of Fame. In any brand. Not no. even in ECW. He wouldn't be close to anything. Maybe FCW. I mean, uh, yeah, the FCW. No, I don't think anywhere, just because of the simple fact that he's... It's hard to push a guy like that. The other thing I wanted to point out was Jared King Lawler, to show that he still got it, he did a standing drop kick, which wasn't too bad. <laughs> it was pretty good. But it was a good try. Yeah. And damn, you know, I give him credit for that. With those tight ass jeans on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jerry King Lawler finishes things up with uh, the second rope fish drop. And the whole match took about two minutes and 18 seconds. Yeah. Now, again, here's another moment that we said last week. Mm-hmm. Okay, now the next segment was Josh Matthews interviewing Mickey James yep. on the actual the actual stage with the ring in the background. Yep. Very much like the old Mean Gene Oakland days. Yep, it was great. Now I, we we said that yep. last week. Yep. That they should have moments like that again. And what happens? They I can't say they used our ideas, but it's there. It's there. So take it for what it's worth. And it worked. It was great. It was great. Got my attention. I was excited. Now, let me tell you, because because of that segment, I was excited because of what actually happened. Right. Now, let me tell you, because because of that atmosphere, because it was it reminded me back in the old days with me and Gene mm-hmm. and, it, and what went down last Monday. Yeah. Let me, let me just explain. Okay. Now, look. Mickey James was doing an interview talking about her match with Maurice. Yep. And then what happens? Then you have the Miz comes out Mm -hmm. and distracts her. And when she turns around, there's Maurice. Yep. And what happens? Yep. She sprays her with an aerosol spray. Mm Mm-hmm. And the first thing that came to my mind, guess what? Guess what I thought of? What? Another French-Canadian 
wrestler that I grew up watching, that I absolutely love, even though he was a heel. Rick the Model Martel with his oh, yeah. arrogant spray. That's right. And it just reminded me a lot with the, um, which led up to the blindfold match which was Rick the Model Martel versus Jake the Snake Roberts at WrestleMania 7 in mm-hmm. that blindfold match, which yeah. was horrible. But I, that was the first thing, and I got excited. Yeah. I think It th- made that feud stronger than what it really is. I li- Yeah. I mean, I liked it because it reminded me of that, and I think this segment out of the whole Raw show, yep. it was the only thing that got me excited. Right. Just because it took you back of all the memories of things that yes. happened on that stage. Yes. The warrior and the curse, the warrior and Sherry smacking him. All, all kinds of stuff happened on that stage. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like it. So anyway, take it for what it's worth again. We called for a mean gene uh, old interview stage with the ring in the background, and that's what happened. Next match was Chris Jericho versus Mark Henry. And I, I like that match. And to sum it all up, Jericho grabs a chair and blasts Henry with it, drawing a DQ, yeah. ending the match at five minutes and nine seconds. But it was good. And then afterwards, there was a big old thing about uh, Henry throws Jericho into the announcing team. And this is funny. Jer- Mark Henry throws Jericho into the announcing team, and Michael Cole fell straight on his ass. <laughs> Next segment was Santino is still with his easy top. Lo and behold, Chavo Guerrero comes in. Yes, sir. Now, this is the final point that I wanted to make. Speak on it. Which was, again, somebody is listening to our show. Again. Um, I was complaining about Chavo. Last week, you were. You, we, we been saying Chavo's too good to be fighting guys like this. He's a Guerrero and he needs to be doing something better. And that's exactly it. It was almost, I almost was excited. I wanted to scream because... Yeah. It was almost word from word of what you said. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's exactly almost what you were so, trying to say, which was, you know, he's a Guerrero. Mm-hmm. Why is he wasting his time on these comedy bits, yep. especially with Hornswoggle? Yeah. He actually said that. He did so, it. So, again, you know, and I might just stop there, and, and I think we get it. I think that people get it. Mm-hmm. That. You know, we do have somebody on the inside that is listening to the show and take it for what it's worth. He's going to use it or not. It's there. The next segment was the sharp dress man match. Hornswoggle versus Chavo Guerrero. Yep. And one of the things I want to point out here was Lillian can't get out of this company fast enough. <laughs> she totally messed up the introduction. I was cracking up. I mean, and it was almost like during... In the middle of her announcing the match, it almost said that, F it, forget it, just come on down. Yeah, that was sad. I mean, she was Imagine laughing. Imagine if that was the main event. She was laughing, looking at the announcing team like, w- what is this? I mean, she was laughing to herself like, what is going on here? What yep. is this crap? Yeah. So you have Hornswoggle coming out with a tuxedo on. We've seen this match before. And then you have... I don't, I don't know why, but Chavo, his pants were sewn together. Yeah, that was the stupidest part of that. I, I don't, I mean, I know they're trying to look for comedy, but I don't know why the... Why does it have to be through Chavo? That's my point. Yeah. It's been like that for a year already. I mean, do a jobber. Yeah. Have a jobber do it. I know it. You know, if you want to go back Horn to... Hornswoggle, I can't believe he's still there. Why Hornswoggle on Raw? Why is he even in the WWE? Well, he is the longest current midget on the roster. I can care less. And that that's a record right there. I mean, put him somewhere where they can use him, like ECW or... I think he belongs in ECW because of the gimmicks. Yeah. I don't know why. In Raw, there's no room for him there. No, Raw is supposed to be the major leagues, the, the place where you want to be. Right. Finley and is where? Finley is what? Um, SmackDown. Right. And how did Hornswoggle come through to East, the WWE? Finley. So why are they separated, and why are they? Why is Hornswoggle on the better show of the three, of the supposedly better show of the three? I don't, I don't get it either. I, I really don't get stupid. it. Stupid. It is. It's stupid. And I, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much done with. And that's Hornswoggle. a spot that you can take and put someone else there and make Raw a little bit better. 